Szent Faustina was a young nun in Poland who had many extraordinary gifts while she was at the convent. These gifts included revelations, visions, the reading of human souls, the gift of prophecy, hidden stigmata, and the ability to participate in God's passion or even by locate. The year was 1931 when our Lord showed himself in his resurrected glorified body in a vision. Jesus was wearing a white garment and had the marks of crucifixion on his hands and feet. He extended his right hand in blessing. His left hand was touching his garment at heart, from which two giant rays emerged, one red and the other fell. Jesus requested, paint an image according to the pattern you see. With the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. I desire that this image be venerated first in your chapel and then throughout the world. In 1934, Eugene Kazmirovsky painted the first image of Divine Mercy under Sister Faustina's direction, which now hangs in the Divine Mercy. Sister Faustina was never satisfied with the image because it was not as beautiful as Jesus was. But one day, after the artist had painted Christ's face at least ten times, she came to the studio and said that Jesus told her to leave the picture as it was. And the most important is to remind humanity to put their trust in his divine mercy. It was in 1996 when a larger image printed from the Shroud of Turin photographic plates was placed by chance on top of a comparable size poster of the Divine Mercy image painted in Vilnius. Father Serafin Mihalenko noticed that the startling coincidence when the superimposed images were unexpectedly backlit. The image similarity to the Shroud of Turin is incredible. The Shroud of Turin is a unique, full-size, good-resolution, three-dimensional image in the negative form of a naked man who was crucified. Many scientific results point out that the Shroud was used to cover the body of Jesus Christ. Among the many findings was that the blood on the shroud was AB blood type from a male, which corresponds to the blood found in every studied Eucharistic miracle. The high level of bilirubin indicates that this man suffered terrible torture. The man on the shroud of Turin suffered, died, and was buried the same way the Gospel said Jesus was. And let's not forget that the sufferings and crucifixion of Jesus were different from the ordinary ways that criminals were crucified. We also know that the body disappeared appeared before decomposition set in, precisely 72 hours later of the death. When the scientists examined the shroud, they found a rare travert in Aragonite limestone on the feet, the nose, and the left knee. This unique limestone was almost the same as a limestone sample from the Damascus Gate, the closest gate to Golgotha. Scientists found that some of the pollens on the shroud were only found in Jerusalem from March through April, and when extinct in the first century, the stitching found in cloth was used used only in Judea in the first century. Scientists found that the man had two Pontius Pilate coins on his eyes from 2 BC and 32 AD. The vanillin dating test, the two spectroscopic analyses, the wide-angle X-ray scattering, and the compressibility and breaking strength test date the shroud to the time of Jesus' life and crucifixion. Some recent and dramatic discoveries have been made about the writing on the shroud. A Paris-based organization conducted studies with an extremely advanced program. They found letters under the chin, where was written Jesus, and on one side was written Nazarene. These findings prove that the Shroud of Turin is the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. Now we come back to the Divine Mercy image. When identically sized images are placed on top of one another, it was discovered that the distance between the pupils is the same. The nose is nearly the same length. The beginning of the upper and lower lips are the same, and the moustache and beard have the same cut, and the hair falls in the same direction at the sides on both images. The Divine Mercy image shows two rays of light, representing the blood and water pouring out of Jesus' heart on the cross. It happened because when the soldier pierced his side with a spear, his heart was not beating for the red blood cells to settle, resulting in blood and water exiting from the side wound. The back image on the shroud shows a separation of blood and clear blood serum, as it is precisely written in John's Gospel. In the Divine Mercy image, Jesus' right hand is raised in blessing. A new study proved that the body moved when the image was transferred to the Shroud of Turin. The research shows that the first movement of Jesus might be a blessing gesture with his right hand. Could it be a divine coincidence? We know that our Lord made many promises to those who venerated the image. Our Lord said, I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. 
all blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you.